Hi friends, welcome to my channel. I'm Arbita Karwa and in this video, I will be talking to you about the TGT PGT examination, the syllabus and the paper pattern. So if you are somebody who is planning to or is preparing for TGT PGT English, then this video is for you. Before I dig in deep and tell you all about the syllabus, I'm going to quickly share what TGT and PGT stands for. PGT stands for Trained Graduate Teachers and PGT stands for Postgraduate Trained Teachers. So basically, if you want to teach students till grade 10 in schools, then you need to have a TGT certificate. However, if you want to teach 11th and 12th grade students, then you have to have a PGT certificate. Another difference is the qualification required for both these exams. People who have completed their graduation can apply for TGT examination and obtain the TGT certificate, whereas aspirants who have completed their post-graduation can apply for PGT examination and obtain their PGT certificate. Different government bodies like NVS, KVS, DSSSB conduct TGT and PGT examinations. Every state in India also conducts their own TGT-PGT exam. When you go through the TGT-PGT syllabus of different government bodies and analyze it, you will realize that mostly all of them have similar syllabus. Some of these states and their respective exam conducting bodies have defined the syllabus in a very structured manner, while some have left the syllabus open-ended. So in today's video, we shall cover the entire paper pattern and syllabus that will apply to all TGT-PGT exams, irrespective of the government body that is conducting it. But before moving on to the paper pattern, I would like to throw some light on some important facts. So, first we need to understand the mode in which the TGT-PGT exam is conducted. Are they pen and paper based or computer based? Well, different government bodies adapt different modes, while some go to pen and paper mode, others adapt computer based mode. The number of questions asked also varies from about 100 to 150 questions. And do remember that we do not have negative marking across any TGT-PGT exam. Now, if we discuss the type of questions asked, mostly all of them follow the MCQ pattern. Subjective questions are hardly asked in any TGT-PGT exams. Let us now discuss the paper pattern. Any TGT-PGT exam is divided into two sections. Section 1 is dedicated to grammar, while the other is dedicated to literature. We will discuss both these sections in detail in this video today. But before that, I would want to shed some light on the difficulty level, as many of you might be worried about it. So let me tell you that the difficulty level of TGT-PGT exam is very less when compared to the level of the UGC net exam. Even the syllabus of TGT-PGT is easier when compared to the UGC net exam. So it's very, very easy to crack this exam. The length of the syllabus is limited. Any student who studies 3-4 hours per day for 2 months, just 2 months, can easily crack this exam. So don't worry because the The paper is very easy. So let us dive in and talk about the devil, that is the syllabus. Now syllabus is highly dependent on the body which is responsible for conducting the respective TGT-PGT exam. In this video, I shall talk comprehensively about a syllabus that shall apply to every TGT-PGT exam. Every government body has a slightly different prescribed syllabus when compared to others. For example, the number of topics prescribed in the syllabus of Uttar Pradesh, UP TGT-PGT, is more than what is prescribed in the exam conducted by DSSSB. So, we will try and cover the wide range that will include all the TGT-PGT exams. So, finally, let's discuss what is the difference between the Syllabus of TGT and PGT. There is just one minute difference. The TGT syllabus is little more compact than what we have in the PGT syllabus. PGT definitely has a wider syllabus to cover. And it should be because postgraduates are giving this exam. So now that we know the basic facts and we've got all of them covered, it's time to look at the syllabus and paper pattern in detail. So let us now move to section number one, which is grammar and let's see what are the topics that they cover in grammar. The grammar section is very very easy as it covers some very common types of topic. Irrespective of the subject for which you are giving the TGT-PGT exam, 
Grammar remains a common topic which needs to be covered by everyone. Hence, you will see that the syllabus of grammar is rather concise and includes topics like reading comprehension, basic grammar topics like parts of speech, tenses, error detection, direct and direct speech, vocabulary topics like synonyms, antonyms, idioms, phrases. So the syllabus is pretty compact. Now I know what you'll ask next. Haha, ha, I know how to read minds. You will ask Karpata which book should I refer to for the grammar portion and how should I prepare for it. If that's what you are asking, I will be taking this in my next video. So if you are looking for a detailed comprehensive book list and free resources for TGT BGT exam, then go ahead and subscribe this channel as in my upcoming videos, I will be talking about the book list, free resources for TGT PGT exam. Now let us move on and look at section number two, which is literature. So I've displayed the literature syllabus on the screen. You may find a bit of difference in the literature syllabus of your TGT PGT exam since there is a slight difference in every government body and the prescribed syllabus but most of the topics are common in all the TGT PGT exam. Now what I have seen in the students is that usually they fail the TGT PGT exam due to their poor hold on the literature section. While they score good marks in the grammar section, they usually fail to score good marks in the literature section. Hence, for a good grip, pay utmost importance to what I'm going to discuss now. Ready? Let's go. The first topic under literature is authors and their works, which contributes to almost 50 to 60% questions in the paper. And basically, these authors are prominent figures from British literature like William Wordsworth, William Shakespeare or prominent figures from American literature such as Robert Frost, Walt Whitman, Ernest Hemingway and others. There are also questions from Indian literature like Kamla Das, Mulk Rajanand, all these writers are covered. In DSSB, you can even find up African writers like Chinua Achiwe and so the list of writers might change from one PGT exam to another state's PGT TGT exam but mostly only the prominent writers are asked in any kind of PGT TGT exam so the most common mistake students make is just studying the summaries of these authors and neglecting the other details such as famous quotations subtitle characters intertextual references so whenever you read an author you need to study a little deeper with a focus on many other details for example there is a very important writer for the TGT PGT exam. Who is that? Charles Lamb. When you study him, you need to study his biography, his works. The most prominent one is Essays of Ilya, in which he used the pseudonym Ilya, and even his essay, The South Sea House, which is quite often asked in the examination. They can even ask a detailed question like to which poem or which romantic writer uh, does the quote a thing of beauty is a joy forever belong. So you should know that it belongs to none other than John Keats out of all the other options. Then if we talk about the novels by Charles Dickens, you can get questions on the characters. Hence you need to make mind maps and diagrams to remember these characters in a logical manner. Hence you see that for all these authors and works, you have to cover everything. Only then you will be able to attend those 50 to 60% questions asked in the exam. To master them, you need a proper way to study each author and their works. Studying the bare facts from a superficial guidebook won't help you clear the TGT PGT exam. Before we move on to the next point, here is something that I want to share. If you are preparing for TGT PGT exam, then I have an amazing news for you. We've just released a separate video course for all TGT PGT aspirants. We are proud to announce that we are the only institute in India right now that teaches through animated videos. Our videos are designed using 3D graphics and animation which enhance the visual memory of the students so that they are able to retain the complicated summaries of novels, plays and poems easily and they are able to recall it effectively during the exam. In our online course, we also provide you with topic-wise video lessons with rich animations covering all essential topics in a step-by-step -step manner which works even when you've done no previous preparation. We also provide you with high quality PDFs and revision notes that cover syllabus-wise topics comprehensively 
and ensure that you qualify your dream exam in just one attempt. Along with video lectures and PDF, we also offer mock test series that consist of more than 3,000 unit-wise, topic-wise questions that comes with detailed explanation. Plus, after every test, you get detailed performance report and your ranking in All India Leaderboard, which will help you to spot your weak and strong areas. We cover all important topics, writers and works in our online course. The detailed list of all these writers that we cover in our online course is available free of cost on our website atvitakarva.com. You can even download this free list and start preparing for these exams on your own. If you are looking for past year papers of TGT PGT exam, then we invite you to visit our website right now. We've provided past 10 years TGT PGT question papers free of cost on our website. You can simply go download the paper, also get the answer keys and start your preparation right away. The link of our website and all our courses are given in the description box below. You can check out the course details from our website and even watch a free demo lecture and attempt a free demo mock test before you decide to enroll in our course. For more information related to our courses, feel free to shoot your queries on the WhatsApp number displayed on your screen. Me and my team will be more than happy to assist you. Let us now move on to the second topic of the syllabus of English literature, that is the history of English literature. So the history of English literature is a very important topic. So as many questions are asked from it. Hence, to understand this part, it is very important that you study the entire history of English literature beginning from Anglo-Saxon till the postmodern age with a special focus on the writers of different ages, the culture, societal norms, historic situations that were prevalent in those ages. And do remember, it will be better if you study this portion of 1500 years in a chronological order. And the third important point is to study forms of literature, which is the third topic in the TGT-PGT syllabus. So the forms of literature focus on the types of novels, dramas and poetry. For example, a poem can be an ode, a sonnet or an epic, right? If we talk about romantic writers like P.B. Shelley, he wrote a significant number of odes, remember? Ode to the West Wind. On the other hand, if we talk about William Shakespeare, he wrote sonnets while Milton's Paradise Lost is an epic poem. So, as you can see that there are different forms of poetry, similarly, there are variations within drama or plays itself. Can you guys state any two works that are a fine example of kitchen sink drama? If yes, then comment below and I will be very happy to give the top 10 comments a big shout out. Just like drama and poetry, there are different types of novels as well. For example, we have an epistolary novel which is written as a series of letters. Another one is coming of the AIDS novel where the character in focus and his development is portrayed and traced across the entire story. Now let us move on and look at the last topic under English literature which is figures of speech. Every literature student knows the simplest of the figures of speech such as simile, metaphor, alliteration. However, in the TGT-PGT exam, you don't only get questions from the simple figures of speech, but also from the complex ones like apostrophe, metonymy. Some of them might be very new to you, but you need to study them for the exam perspective as around 15 to 20 questions from this topic will be asked in the exam. So summarizing what I've said above, there are four main topics in the literature portion, authors and the works, history of English literature, forms of literature, and figures of speech. So if you master these four topics, then there is nothing that can stop you from clearing the TGT-PGT exam. And most students frequently ask me, which section should they focus more on, grammar or literature? As per my advice, you need to equally focus on both the sections, as both of them are important. But since grammar is easy and has limited syllabus, you can give it less time, but you need greater effort, time and guidance for the literature part. So I hope that through this video, I was able to help you in your preparation for the TGT-PGT exam. If you are looking for UGC net, MA entrance, PhD entrance, PGT, TGT exam updates, 
then please follow us on Instagram and Facebook. You could find us on all these social media platforms using our username at the rate Arpita Karwa. We regularly post study tips, free study material on our Facebook and Insta pages. Moreover, every Wednesday, we also share quick revision reels on these pages, which will help you to revise important topics in less than 60 seconds. That's it from my side for this video lecture. I will meet you very, very soon in the next video lecture. Till the time we meet next, happy learning, keep loving literature and stay tuned to arpitakarwa.com.